Hi everybody and welcome to a brand new episode where I celebrate some of Diana Ross's best work through 12 albums, 12 iconic albums and today we are talking about the soundtrack to the unbelievable film which was The Lady Sings the Blues. Now this is an album that came out in 1972 and it is her only her fourth album, fourth solo album, because she had a 15 year career with the Supremes. And it was also her very first number one album. She had number one hits, but uh, no album was a number one. And this was the very first one. And it's quite uh, surprising because it was jazz music. It was not her type of music, which was always uh, dance oriented and much younger. They were very old songs and it was also the soundtrack to a movie. So it wasn't a regular album. Nevertheless, it sold two million copies and uh, it was certified gold, which is very little for um, today's standards, because if you sell two million copies today, you're multi-platinum. Um, she took on the incredible task of uh, being, becoming Billie Holiday, the greatest jazz singer of all times. I come from France, as you all know now, uh, and uh, she is here revered and admired and Diana Ross suffered a little bit uh, from the press and um, from the critics because it was such a huge um, character to take on. And uh, because Diana Ross was this very popular singer who came from a girl group and she was still very young, even though she had a huge career behind her, uh, people didn't think that she could fit into those shoes. And we must say that there are no two more two different women than Billie Holiday and Diana Ross. Diana Ross is a, a woman who was very much in control of her career, of her life, her love of children. And uh, she's overall a very, very happy person. While Billie Holiday was very much into, um, th there was a lot of suffering. She had a very hard life, a very hard childhood. Uh, at 14 years old, she was already... Uh, managing girls, if you know what I mean. I mean, you know, this was a completely, completely different life. And then uh, all of the um, uh, problems that she had with uh, drugs. And so um, they're very, very, very different. And I think that that also appealed to Miss Ross, even though she was a very young woman, to take on this character that was so dramatic and so um, and so important at the same time for the music. Now, Barry Gordy knew Billie Holiday. There's a picture of them together. If I can find it, it's up here. Um, and uh, so it, the story goes that Diana Ross was not very familiar with uh, Billie Holiday. So, of course, the bad, you know, the bad press said that when she was asked to do the movie, um, she said, Billy who? I don't think that's really true. But in any case, it was not the type of music that she gravitated towards. Nevertheless, it really worked very, very well for her. And Diana Ross did for this album, because I always focus on the album, no matter what, even though I blab and go into different areas, uh, she focused on the music and she threw herself into all of the world and the history of Billie Holiday. She supposedly covered walls of um, her living room with pictures of Billie Holiday and also of places where she sang of, of um, uh, pictures of the time, historical pictures. And then she listened to so much music. And that is also what gave her the idea of singing about the working girls, the entertainers. And then she sang about uh, Ethel Waters, Bessie Smith and Josephine Baker. Now, Billie Holiday was a very tall woman, uh, very statuesque. She was very beautiful, but she was a large, strong woman. And Diana Ross, as you know, is a tiny, tiny frame. So there was quite a bit of difference. And then, of course, Billie Holiday's voice is so particular that you can either just copy it or sing differently, but there's just no in-between. And Diana Ross is so brilliant that because what she does is she takes it all in like a sponge and she devours everything and then she leaves it aside. And then when she comes, she's Diana Ross, but it's all digested. And if you listen to uh, the lady who took care of the Supremes at the beginning who were who gave them the, 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 you know, the school of how to 
uh, stand, how to sit properly, how to be elegant, how to hold yourself. She said that Diana Ross was the first one to arrive and the last one to go. And she would watch every single one of the people who went through the class. And, and then all of a sudden you think it's just natural for Diana Ross and she's a hard worker, but she does what I adore is that she always makes it seem effortless. You know, my father used to always say, if you want to make it, make it look easy. And uh, it's always been in my mind. And the one time somebody gave me the greatest compliment of my life is when they came by me after a show and they said, you know, you have nothing to do with her. You're blonde and you're wearing a different gown, but you remind me of Diana Ross, the way you just walk around like a breeze. And I nearly fainted because he didn't know what a fan I was um, of Miss Ross. Now, blonde, if I haven't told you yet, I am a female impersonator. That's why you saw me blonde with a gown. So right away, Diana Ross um, uh, begins with the song Lady Sings the Blues. And this album is a double album that contains a lot of excerpts from the movie. And some of them have been um, sampled to go into modern songs. So you, uh, I heard one day in a club um, a, a, a very modern song, and it was a rapper, but you could hear, hey, baby, and it was Diana Ross talking in the movie. So um, this begins with Diana Ross's arrest, I mean, Billie Holiday's arrest, and uh, then Diana Ross sings Lady Sings the Blues, which is a song that was written by Billie Holiday. Billie Holiday wrote nine songs, amazing songs, and she sings it a cappella. And this is where we go straight into the business. You know that Diana Ross is here to sing and to show you that she is Billie Holiday. Now, something very important about um, this whole project, which is a movie and the soundtrack that goes along with it, is that when uh, Diana Ross came into the filming and rehearsing, she found out that every single costume for the movie had been designed and made without any asking her anything. And I don't know who greenlit that idea, but if you know Diana Ross and Diana Ross is a fashion designer and the most fashion conscious person you can imagine, uh, it was not a great idea. And Diana Ross was very upset and Barry Gordy explained to her that they were historical costumes and clothes that Billie Holiday had worn that were just replicas. But that does not work for Diana Ross because she has to give it her touch and she's very sensitive to this. And that's why I took out today my cock feathers and um, the gardenias. Now, uh, that's the first thing that Diana Ross adored in the Billie Holiday look, but the reason for that is because she found out that Billie Holiday wore gardenias to cool her head from the heat that the chemicals that she used to straighten her hair would let out and it hurt and it gave her headaches and also the scent of the gardenias took away the smell of this uh, these very harsh products. So it's something that Diana Ross loved because not only they looked beautiful, but they meant something. Now the clothes, she went straight to Ray Agayan and Bob Mackie, and I talk about these two designers all the time, and they were so brilliant because they went straight into the historical uh, clothing and, and times, but they picked something that would look and appeal to Diana Ross and make her look fantastic with that incredible figure that she has. And that's why the very first a uh, noticeable outfit that you see in is that yellow dress, which was taken from a painting, it has nothing to do with Billie Holiday, uh, which is the, the uh, uh, a woman in Harlem, and she is hired in a cabaret for the first time, and she's going to sing The Man I Love. And The Man I Love is recorded amongst this brawl. You hear all these people booing her and, and screaming at her. Now, of course, it's some of the artists of that cabaret, and the reason for that is because Billie Holiday refuses to pick up money, the tips, through uh, by holding them between her thighs and lifting her dress, which was the thing to kind of be a bit sexy and a little bit raunchy. And um, and she refuses to do that. So she's singing her song and people are booing her because she's not playing the game. And um, right away she uh, 
accepts money from Billy D. Williams, who is his, her co-star, and he gives it to her by the hand. And so then she's excited because she is one. And then she sings Them Their Eyes, which is a very fast paced jazz songs. And, um, you know, again, incredible. Now, all of the music is conducted by Gil Askey, who's uh, uh, somebody who's followed Diana Ross throughout her career, especially her early career. And she actually made an album which ne didn't come out until very late, which was of jazz standards because this album had done so well, a Barry Gordy decided to make a project where Diana Ross would just sing jazz. Then she sings Fine and Mellow, which is a gorgeous song written by Billie Holiday. And the song starts with My Man Don't Love Me, Treats Me All So Bad. So it's really not something Diana Ross, um, it's not the kind of music that Diana Ross would sing, but she loves that because she sings it as an actress. She's definitely not the kind of woman who's going to say, my man don't love me, because everybody loves Diana Ross. And um, the next song is What a Little Moonlight Can Do, um, another jazz standard, and Diana Ross just sings it beautifully with an orchestra. And um, again, you hear her speaking and talking about um, uh, her orchestra and the band that has to go to the bathroom and all that and that's part of the movie but it's kept into the album so that's pretty exciting nobody's business if i do um uh, is a song from 1922 which is a very famous song diane ross has sung it in concert quite a bit when she does her billy holiday segment and um, our love is here to stay this is gershwin all of these songs have been sung by billy holiday of course and uh, Our Love Is Here To Stay has been uh, sung by Ella Fitzgerald and it's so beautiful. And it's a song which I loved when I heard that album because she says Gibraltar may crumble, they're only made of clay. And I live next to Gibraltar, so I was so excited that she would talk about my country um, because Gibraltar is right between Morocco and Spain. So I've been there, you know, so I my parents never understood why I was always so excited by Gibraltar, but it's just because Diana Ross sang it. Um, Fine and Mellow um, is written by Billie Holiday. Um, and actually, yeah, it's the second time that she sings it in the album. And this time it's the complete song. Uh, sometimes you have little excerpts. So you hear Fine and Mellow twice and other songs like Lover Man. Uh, Lover Man, which was written by uh, Ran Ramirez. And uh, it's very surprising when I heard who had written it, I was surprised that this song was written by a man. And it's a song that Diana Ross sings very, very often live on stage because she sings it so quietly. And with it's very, um, in French, you say langoureux, you know, it's longing and it's just absolutely beautiful. You've Changed, which is a, a Billie Holiday staple, not written by Billie Holiday, written by Bill Carrie or Carney, I can't see, I write them down, but um, it's just so beautiful, this woman saying to this man, you've changed, you're not the angel I was once knew, no need to tell me that we're through, it's all over now. So all of these songs are so painful and so, um, you know, straight from the heart. And Diana Ross, again, uh, she was praised for singing in a way that reminded you of a jazz singer, reminded you of this ambiance of the smoke, of the cigarettes, of the, the dim lights, but you never thought, well, she's trying to do Billie Holiday, might as well listen to Billie Holiday. No, it's Diana Ross. And um, it's also, there's something very young about it. And even though in the movie, there are very, very hard, moments and uh, now maybe is the time for me to tell you Diana Ross was nominated for best actress if she had won she would have been the very first woman to win an Oscar uh, after Harriet McDaniel who had won for supporting actress and so Diana Ross truly truly wanted to win this and if she had I think she would have had a speech I mean it's all in my head but I think that would have just tore down the house, we would have been in tears. Liza Minnelli won. Um, she truly, I believe, deserved, uh, I mean, in my in my dreams, it would have been that both of them 
would have won as a tie. Um, but everything was for Liza. She had been nominated twice. She is what they call Hollywood royalty. She's the daughter of Judy Garland. She's the daughter of Vincent Minnelli. Uh, Judy Garland had never won the Oscar. So this was her time. And um, a very funny story is that Liza Minnelli says, just before they announced Diana Ross reappeared and she changed. And Liza Minnelli says, and I mean, she changed. And she wore this unbelievable gown with a cape that was all lined in fox. And, um, and Diana Ross really seems very saddened not to win. And they, Liza Minnelli and Diana Ross were very, very close friends, but not at that time. Uh, they became very close friends afterwards, towards 1975, so just a few years later. But Give Me a Pickfoot and a Bottle of Beer is a song from 1933. I love this song and I also love Pig's Feet because here in France or in Paris, you have a restaurant called Le Pied de Cochon and that's all they serve. And then Good Morning Heartache, which was the single that came out and only one single, which is surprising because... Uh, it uh, this album was a, a big hit album, two million copies, and you have to remember it's a double album, so it's more expensive than the regular album. Um, it was uh, it released as a single and did pretty well, but it didn't reach number one. Then the song "All of Me," which um, I love because it's so um, uh, upbeat and it's also a very sad song. You know, just take all of me, take my heart. Uh, I'm never going to use it again. Take my arms, take my lips. And then My Man, which, um, of course, I've already covered because Diana Ross sings My Man in concert. And uh, how she sings My Man is just extraordinary. And again, she completely um, makes it her own. And uh, I particularly love that song because, as I've said before, it is a a song uh, as a French song. Uh, uh, at first, it um, it's called Mon Homme, and then it was uh, translated into English. Uh, Don't explain. Written by Billie Holiday, an extraordinary song because uh, it's uh, accepting to be loved uh, completely. Uh, I cried for you, which is a song that Diane Ross sings live and that I absolutely love. And then Strange Fruit which is a song about the lynchings in the South. Um, this song was not written by Billie Holiday, although I thought she had written it, but she gave the idea because she saw uh, a lynching and it, this is when the idea came to her that, you know, what kind of a tree can bear such a strange fruit with blood on the leaves, blood at the root and a black body swinging. And it is an extraordinary song it was written, uh, it was sung by um, Nina Simone, who is also a huge star in France. She lived in France for quite a while. Um, all of these American stars, and you know, us French people, we think that they're French. You know, once they come here and, uh, you know, it's finished, they're French. The very last song, because these videos, I could stay with you forever, is God Bless the Child and uh, Diana Ross uh, sings that song in the most incredible way. And uh, it is also a song that was written by Billie Holiday because she was denied uh, help from her mother who she had helped so much. And so she left her mother's house slamming the door. And before that, she said to her, God bless the child that's got his own. And she fumed for a couple of days and then she wrote the song in one night. When this song is taken over by Diana Ross, uh, she is saying exactly, I mean, she's saying God bless the child that's got his own, but with so much hope and so much love for um, the future and for children. Definitely when Diana Ross says God bless the child, she knows what she's talking about and I'm going to stop talking and I'm just going to say whoop, thank you for um, listening to my uh, stories and thank you for being part of this community. I'm so happy and so proud uh, to share with you my love for Miss 
Diana Ross. And uh, God bless you all. And see you next week with another album. <laughs>